Howdy ho there, friends and neighbors. Bobby here today along with my son. Nathaniel. Yeah, hey guys. Today we're going to be working on uh, Nathaniel's Ford Ranger that he has uh, inherited from me. We, uh, it actually has a blown head gasket right now. I overheated it here several months ago. We haven't got a chance to do anything with it until today. So guys, this video here today will be just probably uh, tearing down a um, 2000 model Ford Ranger, uh, removing a cylinder head. Uh, it's probably as far as we'll actually get on this video today. And Nathaniel's gonna jump in here and get his hands dirty and uh, learn a little bit about automotive repair. So stay tuned as we get started. Okay, folks, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take our quarter inch air ratchet with an eight millimeter socket on here, and we're gonna remove the bolts and get the hood out of the way. So stay tuned as we get this done. Okay, we got the hood off of the vehicle. We actually put it up onto the roof of the vehicle. We put a little blanket down first. But guys, I want to show you something before, before we get started here. I go to take the cap off, and this car hadn't been run in, what, since last week? But it's been sitting here with pressure on the cooling system. Watch this. I'm cracking this loose. It's bubbling in my cooling tank. Guys, that's because there's combustion pressure in the uh, cooling system from, uh, from the blown head gasket. So we're gonna start by pulling things apart. We'll show you as we go. Okay guys, first thing you wanna do is actually disconnect your negative battery terminal as that's what Nathaniel's working on right now. And then we'll pull the cable end off. Let me see if it'll come off now, Nathaniel. Let's see if it'll come off. Oh yeah, it will. So just disconnect the negative and lay it out of the way. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove our air box and this air intake tube and lay it out of the way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unclip our box down here, okay? This actually releases it from the lower part of the box. We're gonna disconnect our mass airflow sensor. Uh, well, it looks like we got another sensor right here we need to disconnect and we're gonna unscrew this, um, uh, I can't even think of what, uh, clamp, <laughs> worm clamp as well. So let's knock that out right quick. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> ah, oh, oh, all right. Hey guys, next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna reach down here and turn a little wing nut on the bottom of the radiator. Now we've got a drain pan underneath here already and we're just gonna let all the coolant drain out of the engine and radiator. Okay, after draining the coolant, we went ahead and took the upper radiator hose off that connected from here down to the thermostat neck. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and pull our drive belt off. We have a, a 3 8 drive breaker bar down here in the tensioner. And if you don't have a diagram like we do, you might wanna take your piece of paper and draw the diagram of how the belt runs, okay? So that you won't have to fight getting it back on when it's time to go back together. Okay, with the breaker bar in place, we're gonna move it in that direction to release the tension. I can reach right up here, see where I'm at here? And we're just gonna pull the belt off of the AC compressor. And now we can remove the whole belt after we re release this tension. Okay, it's that easy. Okay, just to bring you up to speed, uh, we've done a couple steps here without filming. We've taken the fan loose. We've got the belt totally off. We're gonna leave the belt hanging down here in the shroud while we take two bolts out, 10 millimeter with a 3 8 ratchet, one on each side. And then we'll be able to pull the shroud and the fan out of there at the same time. Okay, with the shroud loose, I'm grabbing the fan with one hand. I got the shroud with the other hand. And we're just gonna bring them both out of there together, just like so. Next thing we're gonna take out here, guys, is the uh, radiator. Uh, we're gonna disconnect these transmission lines first with a, ooh, I might have to get a bigger wrench to hold that in. Hang on just a second. Okay, now I got a one and one sixteenth inch wrench to hold this um, um, fixture in place while we break this loose. Oh boy, that's awfully tight. Who who tightened it up that tight? Oh no! Must have been me at one time or another. Yeah, it could be. All right, so we got an upper line and we have a lower line that we're going to break loose, and we're going to do that, and then we'll spin these out of here. Okay. After we got these here backed off, guys, and pulled out of here, you're gonna lose a little bit of automatic transmission fluid. 
Now I have a big catch basin underneath this vehicle right here. It's actually a, a 55 gallon drum spill um, uh, catcher is what it is. Pretty cool thing that I acquired seven, several years ago. It works great for water pump jobs or head gasket jobs like this. Um, so next we're gonna get our 10, mil 10 millimeter on our air ratchet. We got one right here and on the other side here, Nathaniel. We're gonna pull them out. And we have one on this side, guys. Okay, guys, I got uh, to disconnect the lower radiator hose. I use a pair of channel locks with, with my spring clamp. I'm gonna pull this hose off of here and we're probably gonna hear some fluid hit our spill pan. And uh, there we go. Oh my goodness. You can hear that extra fluid leaking into our pan right there. Now we're ready to pull this radiator out of here. All right, folks, the thing is gonna take our radiator out. Go and grab that thing. Okay, I think I got it. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Careful. Yeah, let that extra fluid just run right out. Good job. Yeah, let the fluid out. Guys, you see that running out down there? Come on, let the fluid out. Come on, buddy. Yeah, let it run out. Come on, little buddy. <laughs> Come on, little buddy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's funny. Um, oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Ease it up. Straight oh. up. Careful not to. Here, I'll help you out here. All right. All right. All right. Straight yep. on up there. Good job, All buddy. Right. All right. Here we go. All right. There's our radiator out. All right, guys, what Nathaniel's doing is taking the air compressor off of this thing right now. He's got the top two bolts out. He's going to pull the bottom two. we got a connector right here, and we also have a line attached on the back as well. Okay, guys, next in our video, we are going to take our power steering pump pulley off, and we are using a power steering pump pulley kit to do that. If you would like to see how to use that further, I will be making a video on how to use a pump remover kit, but it definitely is a tool that is required to do this, okay? You can rent one from your local auto parts store, or we will put a link down below to purchase one off of Amazon. Okay, guys, when it goes, it goes. Let me pull this up here where we can see. So we'll pull my ratchet off, lay it aside, pull my wrench off, lay it aside, and now we can just pull our tool right off of the end here. Just like so, guys. And there's our pulley. It's actually made out of fiberglass. Feels really lightweight. So now we can continue on. Okay, Nathaniel was now taking the three bolts out that hold the power steering pump in the bracket. You go ahead, Nathaniel. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and pull these uh, lines off from the power steering pump and just go ahead and get it totally off of the vehicle. I think even laying it out of the way is just gonna be in our way. So taking the 18 millimeter wrench, taking the pressure hose off here, and then I'll take the uh, low pressure hose off it just has a spring clamp on it, and then we'll move this out of the way. Okay, next thing we're going to do is try to take this whole bracket off that has the um, uh, idler pulley there as well. Looks like there's one bolt here going to the side of the head. There's one down here. There's two, uh, one nut, and then you can pull this bracket off, and then another one behind it, and one down here. So let's do that and see how far that gets us. Okay guys, those bolts I just showed you, we took all those out and it still had one more holding. And there's a 10 millimeter headed one right over here as you see where my socket is. And we're backing that out right now. You can see it's gonna come off as soon as I pull this out. Okay, there's that bolt with the 10 millimeter head. And here is our bracket. And we should be able to just pull it right off of here. We may have a wiring harness in the way. And here we go. So she's coming right up through the opening right here, guys. And we'll lay this aside for now. Okay, guys, with that bracket out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and take my eight millimeter and take the two bolts out and pull the timing cover off here right quick. There's one. And I believe there's another one right down here. 
Hey guys, we're back here on day two. We're gonna start um, uh, taking this intake part here off. I'm gonna start by taking these two eight millimeter bolts out and pulling this cover off the throttle linkage. And we're gonna keep on working and trying to take this intake off. Okay, now we're gonna take our three eighths air ratchet, 10 millimeter socket, pull these two tens out, pull the bracket off the intake and disconnect our cable. This is our throttle cable. All right, with the throttle disconnected and laid out of the way, we're going to go and start pulling some of these hoses off. As you see, this sucker is like all soaked and deteriorated. We'll definitely be replacing this one uh, when we go back together with it. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect some of these wires. We've got the IEC motor over here. I'm going to take the connector loose there. Take this connector loose here on the TPMS sensor. Take this vacuum hose loose on the EGR. And this hose here, I'm just going to go ahead and start popping some of these vacuum hoses. Here's another one going over, I think, to the DPFE valve over here. I believe that's what that is. We're going to go ahead and just start pulling hoses and pulling um, vacuum lines and connectors off of this upper intake here right quick. Okay, folks, I got a uh, inch and a sixteenth wrench. I am over here breaking loose the um, uh, EGR tube going into the EGR valve. So a little bit hard to get to, but I did get it broke loose. So I'm gonna have to take this wrench and break this thing and keep wrenching it off until I can get it to where I can move it with my fingers. So we're gonna keep working at this guys to get this tube disconnected. Okay, with the EGR tube removed here, uh, what we're gonna do is go and start trying to take this upper part of this intake off of here. There's a bolt right here. There's one here, 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 and one that I that we can't really see is sort of underneath this EGR valve, sort of in the same location this one is, but just on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and start working all these out. 13 millimeter, probably gonna have to use a swivel, possibly a straight. I don't know what I'm gonna have to use back in here, but we're gonna start, I'll let you know when I get it. We're gonna break all this loose, pull the throttle body and intake off as one assembly. So let me get started. Okay, this one back here really wasn't that hard to get to. All I have on there is that 13 millimeter impact swivel. Probably can't see it, but it really is not that difficult. I got it on there, breaking it loose now. And we're gonna back it out and we should be able to pull this intake off. Okay, guys, this thing here is pretty much loose. I was trying to figure out what was holding it. Bring the camera right around here where my finger is. Right through there, you see that hose? Right there, guys, bring it on around just a little bit further. Still can't see where my finger is. There's a, there's, there you go. See, there's a hose right there of the clamp. Where that's probably a coolant passage running to the throttle body. We're gonna go go ahead and get our needle nose pliers, and we'll back that sucker off. We should be able to pull it off. Hey guys, I want to show you this tool right here. This little uh, 90 degree clamp ho clamp hose grabbing tool. I think it's a snap on. Yep, it sure is a snap on. I bought this thing several years ago when I worked at uh, Infinity because they had hoses all over those Nissans. Um, it, this actually works great for this hose here because you can stick it in here and get a hold of it and twist it and we're almost off with it now. So there we go, we're off with that hose. And this is a very handy tool to have. Okay guys, I think I'm about ready to pull this thing off of here. Um, your PCV valve is this hose here. There's a PCV valve at the end of it that goes down here and connects to the block, I guess or a crankcase right here. I'm sure this has never been replaced and this hose is like hard and brittle. I'm gonna try to find this hose and replace it when we go back together with it. This line here went to our fuel pressure regulator. So make sure you disconnect that. And looks like we're pretty free here. We got something else holding over here. What is that? Okay, we got our, we got our vacuum harness here that runs kind of within the intake right there, okay? So we're gonna make sure we pull that. We also got another hose hooked up over here, a coolant hose underneath. I'm gonna pull this harness out right here and try to make a mental note that this feeds itself back through the intake, through this first runner right here. And we got one more coolant hose right here to take loose on the bottom of the intake. And I'll do that right now. And then we'll move this out of the way. 
Okay guys, I'm gonna go and pull all these spark plug wires out of here. We are going to add this to our parts list. We're gonna order us a new set of um, plug wires for this thing. And I don't guess I've ever replaced them. I think I've replaced the ones on this side before because they were easy to get to. I know I have done plugs on this thing one time before, but we're gonna go ahead and replace all this as well and uh, go and get all this out of our way. Remember this 2.5 has eight spark plugs, okay? This coil pack here controls the driver's side bank, one through four, and it's marked on here, plain and easy. The other um, coil pack operates the passenger side or right side bank, and you can uh, easily, you know, replace the smart plug wires. It ain't no big deal, and it's just one, two, three, four. So anyway, just wanted to mention that right quick. Okay, guys, I just want to show you something. We got the plug wires out of the way, and I want to go ahead and get this harness, this vacuum harness, I think, that goes over here to the DPFE valve. I think that's what this is. Um, I went ahead and disconnected it so that we could just lay the whole thing out of the way. We might just lay it up here for right now. And so we don't chance breaking anything. Just want to show you that right quick. It connects right over here. Next, we're going to take the alternator off. There's three bolts that hold it on. Two down low that look like this. One of them you'll have to leave in the alternator to actually get the alternator on and off. Just don't forget that. We're gonna take the top one off now. And then we should be able to disconnect the wires and we'll move it out of here. Okay, folks, what we did here now, see this wiring harness right here? It actually went to both coil packs. It went to both these sensors and it went down in between this heater hose all the way down here to looks like probably is what is a crank sensor down here. So what we've done, we've disconnected all this now, okay? So we can sort of lay it out of the way. It's still got something holding it back here at the head. When we get back there, we'll probably really be able to like lay it up here totally out of the way and maybe put a piece of tape around and tape it to the hinge or something to keep it out of our way. So guys, we're gonna stop on this today. We're gonna to continue on and you won't even miss us because we'll be like right back. Okay guys, we're back here on a different day now. Uh, we're still tearing down this thing, trying to get the head off. What we're gonna do now is this lower intake we're gonna start with unplugging our wiring harness going to all of our fuel injectors here. We're gonna unplug all these and try to lay all of this out of the way. And the next step that we're gonna do, I may tie that up a little bit better in a minute. We're gonna go ahead and pull this fuel rail and injectors off. Actually, we might just leave it attached to there if we possibly can. But we do have, if you'll follow this line coming from the uh, fuel pressure regulator down to here, you'll see that it has a quick connect like your old air conditioning lines. I don't know if you can see that or not uh, with the camera, but we're going to disconnect that with a release tool. And then we're going to go ahead and pull, uh, we're, we'll work on getting the uh, intake off. Another thing I'm going to do is go ahead and pull this electrical bulkhead here apart. I'm going to take that 10 millimeter out of that. And I think I will go ahead and take these bolts off of the uh, fuel rail, although we may end up leaving it in place. So let's get started. Okay guys, I got this bulkhead connector off of here. And I'm glad I did decide to disconnect this because I see a little bit of corrosion starting to build up on these pins here. So at a later date, before we go back together with this thing, we will get some electrical cleaner and we will spray in here and maybe find a little fine brush and we're gonna brush all that corrosion out and really clean both sides of this connector good. We're not having any type of electrical problems at this time, but I wanna do that to prevent that as an ongoing thing. And we'll also use dielectric grease uh, on these pins as we go back together. Okay guys, these are my release tools for fuel lines and air conditioning lines. Um, as you can see right down here where I'm pointing, this is the connector that we've gotta figure out which one fits it. So I'm gonna try just a couple right quick. This one might be too big. But what you have to do is snap it around, it might be the right one, and push to release, get the tabs to, oh, I believe it is the right size, okay. So we have pushed the tool in here. Let me show you on this right here. As you can see, these little ears here have to push in to release a round spring. And then at that time, you should be able to grab the line and wiggle it off, just like that. So now our fuel line is disconnected. Guys, I just want to show you right quick, we're going to go ahead and pull this injector rail out of the way. Uh, we removed the two bolts, and so there we go. We're just going to lay it out of the way so it don't get damaged. It's also going to make 
it easier to get to these bolts to pull this lower intake off. Okay guys, I'm gonna work on getting this uh, lower intake off. There's eight bolts holding it on. There's four across the top here. Looks like I can get my swivel in here on those. The other ones are kind of down low. Uh, I, it might be a little tricky. Might have to use a straight socket and then a little swivel. But I'm gonna work on getting these removed right quick. And then we'll, we'll go on after that. So just stay tuned. Guys, I wanna show you something back on this back corner here. The bottom bolt on this side has a nut on it because it holds this ground wire right here that's attached to the firewall. Make sure you remember to put that back on or you could have some uh, electrical issues. And everything across the bottom here we've been able to get with our straight socket here on our 3 8 ratchet. We're just going straight underneath the intake here. And I believe we're getting ready to pull out the, the last two bolts here right now. Okay, with those last two bolts removed there, guys, here is your lower intake manifold. And we're just going to lay it aside right now and keep all the bolts uh, close by so we don't get them mixed up. Okay guys, I'm gonna show you a little tip here, okay? Um, sometimes when you're doing big projects like this right here and you have a whole lot of bolts, you might wanna try to keep them organized. So what we're doing, we just took that intake off, right? So we're gonna kinda keep all these bolts here together. We got us a piece of um, foam board here or you can use a cardboard box. Uh, works just as good. And we're just gonna go ahead and take a screwdriver Phillips head works fine usually. And push all your bolts in here. Take you a Sharpie. And you can write here what these are. These are bolts, these are intake bolts. Lower intake bolts, okay? And it just helps you keep track of what's going on so when it makes it a little easier going back together. Okay folks, we're back here on the right side of the engine now. We're, gonna, we're trying to take this whole bracket here off that has the coil packs attached to it. Right now I see two bolts here, but there's gotta be more here somewhere. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull these two 13s out here and see if anything loosens up. <clears throat> and we'll go from there and then we'll be on the hunt for any other fasteners that we may have to look for. So stay tuned. Guys, I think I found the other bolt. It's actually right underneath this. Uh, I think this is the DPFE sensor or something. It's got two eight millimeter uh, bolts holding it on. I'm gonna disconnect that to where I can get to this bolt up here and we should be able to take this whole bracket, coil packs and all right off of here. So stay tuned and we'll see if it works. Okay guys, as you can see, this thing is loose now. Let's see if I can just thumb this thing out by hand. So I'm gonna have to listen to that air ratchet. Oh yeah, so now these three bolts right there hold this whole assembly on. So we're gonna remove this out of our way. All right, guys, with that bracket out of the way, as you can see, our, our exhaust manifold is easily exposed. We got 13 millimeter headed bolts. We got eight of them right here. I'm pointing all of them. We got a bracket where we got to take the nuts off and then the bolts out of here. Hopefully none of this stuff will break. Uh, we will pull this bracket off, unplug this sensor, lay it aside, and hopefully uh, we'll leave the manifold just hanging up here if, if there's enough room to do that, okay? instead of crawling underneath the vehicle and disconnecting the exhaust. So I'm gonna go ahead and start taking these bolts out now, and then we'll check back with you in a minute. Okay guys, hey, look here. Our manifold is free from the cylinder head now, and it's laying back about two inches. I think that's gonna be fine. We're gonna leave that right there where it's at and continue on. All right guys, we got two more things to do. We gotta take the valve cover off, which that's pretty easy to do. And we need to take the front of this engine down, get the timing belt off. So first of all, I'm gonna pull this um, crank bolt out, okay? The belt's still on, but I'm gonna go ahead and use a 22 millimeter socket and an impact. Go ahead and break that bolt loose. And as you can see, it spun out nicely. And we'll go ahead and get that out of the way. Okay guys, let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to take this timing belt off. Uh, I have a video on replacing the timer belt on this actual vehicle many, many years ago. But this tensioner here, they make a special tool for releasing the tension. I may end up purchasing one, but actually you can use just a pry bar. I've loosened the 13 millimeter headed bolt where my index finger is. I've loosened this 17 millimeter just a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is take the pry bar and wedge up against that counter shaft gear and now I'm going to tighten my tensioner back up. 
kind of hard to do here. I uh, should have maybe Nathaniel helping me instead of holding the camera, but we want to film this for you guys. Anyhow, I'm going to tighten this back up, and then we can take the belt off of here. Okay, belt's loose now, guys, so we can just simply remove the belt out of place. we got a new belt to go on this thing, by the way. And actually, there's a particular way that this all lines up your, <clears throat> your crank, your cam, and your counter shafts here, and there's marks here that I've made. We'll talk more about that when we go back together, or I do have another video on this channel that explains very well how to line one of these uh, 2.5 liters up. So don't worry about that right now. We're just trying to get everything tore apart. Guys, we're gonna go ahead and pull this tension off of here and get it out of the way. Okay, guys, we're gonna take our eight millimeter uh, socket on a quarter inch air ratchet and zip looks like we got eight bolts, four on each side to take the valve cover off. So let's get started. Okay, with all those bolts removed, we should be able to pull this valve cover off of here, hopefully. And we gotta be able to lift up. Looks like our harness back here is kind of holding us up a little bit. I have to finagle this over top of the EGR tube. Trying not to have to take the EGR tube off of here if we don't have to. I think we can maneuver that like that. Hopefully, we'll be able to lift this on up. Uh, are we going to be able to do it? I think we did. All right, guys, just like that. Okay, guys, we got a lot of water inside this engine. It's got me a little concerned. I don't know if we got a cracked head. Uh, it could be a head gasket. Could be uh, a um, still a head gasket because of the um, uh, oil could be leaking from the or the coolant could be leaking from the coolant jacket into an oil jacket uh, through the gasket and still getting into the engine. We know we had compression going into the coolant system, so we're going to go ahead and take a 13 millimeter. Looks like right here. Looks like one, two, three, four, five. And there's five head bolts on this side. We're gonna go ahead and zip them off of the impact wrench and get this head off of here and see what things look like. All right, guys, I got a 13 millimeter half inch drive socket. Uh, uh, one foot extension was the only one I could find right now. And an impact, we're gonna go ahead and zip all these off and remove this head. Hey guys, now we're just uh, pulling the bolts out of here. All of them are loose. And then we're getting ready to pull this head off here in just a second. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, the moment we've all been waiting for, I'll make sure there's nothing attached to the back of the cylinder head. But I can feel, I don't feel anything. So let's see if this sucker will come undone. Actually, she's stuck pretty good. Let me get a screwdriver and see if I can pry it. Okay, guys, we're gonna take a little screwdriver here and just kind of pry. Oh, there we go. Looks like she's already released. Maybe I just went and lift it up hard enough all right so here we go we're gonna lift up on this head a little bit let's see if we can remove him off of here okay the gasket stuck just a little bit and this is a heavy rascal it's cast iron for sure there ain't no aluminum head all right let me get a hold up here nathaniel and keep keep the camera rolling good gravy dog that's a heavy rascal I'm gonna stay right here for a minute. <laughs> You're gonna squish that thing here. That's okay. That's the old head gasket. We don't need that no more. All right, go and pause it for just a minute. Okay, guys, there's our cylinder head, and that just about wraps up our video here. From this point here, we will clean up the head, send it off to a machine shop, get it magnaflux and checked out. You can bring the camera up. And then we'll get back to putting this thing back together here in a week or so. I want to thank you for stopping by today and checking out our video on how to remove a cylinder head on a 2.5 liter Ford Ranger engine. And also I want to let you know about two other channels that we are starting here. One is called RJW Financial Coaching and one is called um, the Personal Body Makeover. Okay, one's a fitness channel and one is a financial channel. We're trying to keep this main channel here strictly on how to do stuff, okay guys? So all those uh, money talk videos and workout videos will end up going over to the other channel. 
And we also have one called Mint Hill Billy Music. So all of our music videos will go over to that as well. It's actually been established for a few years now, but not a whole lot of subscribers. So I'll leave some links down below if you'd like to subscribe to these channels and follow us on there as well. Thanks again for stopping by today. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell so you can be notified when we post videos. Have a great day. Bye-bye.